Hello candidates. Welcome to the second session of our uh, lesson. Uh, now we are going to look at uh, other Asian traders. When we say Asian traders, most of the traders came from the continent of Asia. And uh, these came from different countries. Like we are, for example, we have the Indian traders. These ones came from India. We have the Persian traders. These ones came, these ones came from Persia. The Pakistan traders came from Pakistan. So to begin with the Indian traders, which shall be our center of focus in this lesson, Indians in East Africa uh, were categorized into the traders, and basically these ones were the Banyanis. Other people call it Banyanis, but Banyanis uh, who were moneylenders. And their major contribution here was to introduce the banking systems in East Africa. In P6, we looked at this. Even in P5, when we talked about the Indians, we know that the first Indian, like P in P5, to open up a, a shop in Kampala was Aldina Visram. So he was among these people, the Banyanis. Then we had another, the second category was that of the constructors of the railway or railway constructors these were indian coolies because if they asked you you needed to know that they were the indian coolies who were brought to construct the kenya uganda railway and there were reasons as discussed in the p6 workable for example to link uganda to the coast to end slave trade to make the transportation of goods from the interior to the coast of East Africa easier during that period. Remember, before the construction of the Uganda Railway, people were using Futubishi. That is not English. Kabonge transport. Kutambuza vigere. Anyway. So, for example, like I've already said, there were the contributions made by these early Indian traders or Indians in East Africa. As they came, they had their mission carrying out trade, helping in the construction of the Uganda Railway. Uh, as they were here, the major one or the first one was that they built the Uganda Railway. Being business people, they built shops. They introduced Indian rupee as a medium of exchange. You needed to know that the first form of currency that was introduced in East Africa was by the, by the Arabs. And these Arabs introduced the Kawari shells. That was the first form of money introduced in East Africa. Now, when the Indian traders came, they brought their own currency, which replaced the Kawari shells. And that was what we called the Indian rupee. Then these people also built schools. For example, the Aga Khan schools that we have in Uganda and Kenya. They also built factories. We have Kakira Sugar Works built by Muljibai Madivan in Kakira, in the Jinja district. We have Lugazi Sugar Works or Sugar uh, Ken Estate. That was built by uh, Meta. Then we also uh, said that they opened up sugarcane plantations and tea estate by these people that you have, have already mentioned. They also introduced the banking system. Now this one was by the Banyans. Was by the Banyans. Uh, while in East Africa, these people had challenges. Among others, like any other challenge would be, for example, currently we have the pandemic, which is making us suffer a lot. For this period, these people had their challenges. For example, attacks from wild animals. During that period, Africa had not yet been developed, so it was very difficult 
for these people to move safely. So they were being attacked by wild animals. Uh, they had a, a problem or a challenge of language difficulty. They knew only their language. And uh, neither did the natives know the Indian language. So number three, or part C, uh, there was a problem or attacks from tropical diseases. Candidates, boys and girls, the way I have stated here, I know in the worker books, the answers are just thrown. But you need to mind your answering techniques. For example, like I have outlined here, an examiner can easily understand what you are trying to talk about. Then there was a challenge of poor means of transport. Before the introduction of modern means of transport and communication, people were moving on foot. So, which was a serious challenge. So, it is important for us to know that the sugarcane plantations were started by Indians. They were started by the Indians. Or which were started by Indians in Uganda, among others. We had Kakira sugarcane sugar estate found in Jinja by Muljibai Madivan. Then Lugazi Sugar Cane Estate or Plantation found in Wuyikwe District. That is in Lugazi, which was started by Nanji Kalidasi Meta. He did not only start this. They have other companies that currently were started, like the that cable construction that was by Nanji Kalidasi Meta. We have uh, the sweet industry that was uh, also constructed by Kakira Sugar Works. So these people have made a lot of uh, things in our country, Uganda. Now, early traders had a great impact on East Africa in the sense that these were both positive and negative. So, for example, to begin with the positive ones. These people led to the development of industries in East Africa. Or rather, you can say they led to industrialization in East Africa. In the sense that they constructed more some industries. Currently, we have Mkwano group of Mkwano industry in Kampala here. That is by Indians. Kakira Sugar Works in Jinja. Uh, Lugazi Sugar Works in Buyikwe district. Those are by, uh, were constructed by Indians. Two, they led to the development of modern transport and communication network. This is evidenced during the construction of the Kenya-Uganda railway. <coughs> Three, they made the interior of Africa to be known the rest of uh, the world. When they constructed the Kenya-Uganda railway, it made the transport, transport easy which encouraged other foreigners to come to the interior of East Africa. Uh, number four, like I said, the Banyanis introduced the banking system. So this one has also led to the economic development of our country, where people uh, gained skills, others are employed as bankers, uh, terrors in the banks. So that was uh, one of the positive uh, effects of uh, the Indians. However, on the other side, uh, the negative impacts were, one, they dominated the business sector in Uganda. But these people were right, because we had our local trade, but it was not as advanced as these people. Two, aware that the backbone of Uganda is agriculture. When cotton was introduced, Ugandans were growing cotton, which they were selling to these Indians, but they were being paid a peanut compared to the labor they were putting in in the agriculture. Three, it led to the exploitation of Africa's resources. When the railway was constructed, they, it was being constructed and extended into strategic areas which were agriculturally productive, Others that had minerals, for example, Kasese, it was constructed to go and exploit the copper. 
Northern Uganda, it was extended to Pakwachi to get tobacco which was being grown from those areas and cotton. In Busoga, it was extended to Namasangari area because that region has fertile soils and it was a cotton growing area in Busoga. So they were strategic. So all those resources were being taken outside and could be uh, produced. Then they, they were being brought back. So our activities shall be found on page 51 to 52 and the other activities shall be sent. So this is a summary of what is in that workbook and some information may not be there but you can get it from here. Thank you for being good children. We shall meet again.